a lot of Pixar movies with like real big dramatic romantic storylines, but there are still quite a few romantic moments. So today we are counting down the top 10 romantic moments in Pixar. All right, let's just dive right in. Number 10, Merida shoots for herself. So yeah, right out of the gate, this might seem like an odd choice because typically you'd think of a romantic moment involving two people. And yet in this scene, Merida is literally shooting so she can avoid being in a couple with somebody else. And yet, there is still something romantic about it. Because she's not really shooting against her suitors, she's shooting against an outdated tradition and for, whether she realizes it or not, more independent and happier romances in the future. Number nine, Celia on the loudspeaker. This is a really brief but sweet scene that happens in Monsters, Inc. Throughout most of the movie, Mike has been ruining his relationship with Celia against his will just so that he can keep the secret of Boo safe. When he does eventually decide to come clean to Celia about the entirety of the situation, at first she thinks he's crazy until she sees Randall chasing them, at which point she immediately forgives him, accepts his honesty, and harbors no ill will, and jumps to his aid by announcing over the loudspeaker that Randall has just broken the all-time scare record. Go get him, googly bear. It only buys Mike and Sully a few seconds of time, but in the end, that's just what they needed. Number eight, Ken loves Barbie. Yeah, these two are maybe my favorite couple in all of Pixar. They are just hilarious. Throughout all of Toy Story 3, Ken is struggling between his feelings for Barbie and his allegiance to Lotso. My favorite scene between them is definitely Ken's fashion show, where at that point, I think it is safe to say Ken is all in but Barbie is still playing him at that point. The moment that actually gets on the list is later in the movie when Ken comes barreling through the garbage chute in his boxers and announces, He's a Barbie doll, Ken. There's a hundred million just like her. Not to me, there's not. How perfect. It's like they were made for each other. Number seven, Mr. Incredible isn't strong enough. This happens right before the climactic battle with the Omnidroid. Throughout the movie, Bob has been coming to terms with a midlife crisis by working out, buying a new car, and moonlighting hero work, all while lying to his wife. Since then, he gets tricked, captured, rescued, reunited with his family, captured again, rescued again, and now is about to fight a giant robot and says he wants to do it alone. Based on all of his earlier behavior in the movie, Mrs. Incredible thinks he's just trying to prove how strong he is by doing it alone. But that's when Mr. Incredible reveals it's not his physical strength he's concerned about, it's his emotional strength. He's concerned he's not emotionally strong enough to lose his family again. I'm not strong enough. And then they kiss and fight a giant robot. <sighs> and people wonder why this is my favorite Pixar movie. Number six, Carl leaves the chairs at Paradise Falls. Oh, teared up just thinking about these two. Carl spends most of Up trying to get his house to Paradise Falls, the one adventure he never got to have with his now deceased wife. Or so he thinks. What's great about this moment is how Carl finally stops letting Ellie's death figuratively and literally weigh him down. He's able to stop focusing on just the fact that she died and embrace how she would have wanted him to live. In a weird way, by letting her go, he's actually able to be more with her. And fittingly, then when they return home, he's able to live out the other adventure they never really got to have together by acting as a stand-in father figure for Russell. He even gives him the Ellie badge. Do you have any idea how hard that was to part with Russell? Number five, the red and blue umbrellas. There's almost nothing that isn't adorable about the two umbrellas from Pixar's The Blue Umbrella, the short that played before Monsters University. If you are unfamiliar with it though, I highly recommend you go check it out. For one, the music is amazing, the photorealistic animation of the city is great, and the creative ways in which the city helps unite the two umbrellas is just delightful. I honestly might have enjoyed it more than Monsters University, which is crazy. I mean, who would have thought a love story between umbrellas could be so compelling? 
Well, you know what, actually I say that, but then number four is... Lava! I have a dream I hope will come true. Yeah, what's hotter than two umbrellas falling in love? How about two volcanoes? Lava is hands down my all-time favorite Pixar short. It played before Inside Out and tells the story of a male volcano who wants nothing more than to fall in love. But like any good bachelor should, that doesn't stop him from singing about it literally every day for thousands of years. I won't ruin the ending for you in case you haven't seen it, but I will say it literally almost brought me to tears at one point. And you'll know the part I'm talking about because your eyeballs will be dripping water. Maybe bring ice cream. But speaking of water, number three, Nemo's name. Sadly, we don't get to spend too much time with Nemo's mother, Coral. But in the few minutes of time that we do get to see her, she tells Marlin that she wants to name at least one of what looks like hundreds of about-to-be newborns Nemo. Marlin sort of scoffs this off and says, well, maybe, but I'd like most of them to be named Marlin Jr. Which would have sucked for all of his future daughters, but they were saved the embarrassment by never having existed. Oh. oh, I was happy, sometimes also sad. I'm not, I'm not crying, you're crying. But of course, you know what happens next. Marlin names his one surviving son, Nemo, and through him, the memory of his mother lives on. Can we please go to the next one? Number two, oh God, yo, never mind. Can we go, can we go back to the dead fish? <sighs> Number two is the opening scene of up. Carl meets Ellie and she gives him the grape soda badge and they grow up and they get married and you're like, oh, she's so cool and he's so shy and they're so cute together and then it's like they can't have a baby and then, oh my God, is she sick? What are you doing to me? And then she dies before Carl could give her the tickets to Paradise Falls. I mean, he was bringing them to her in a picnic basket, a picnic basket. Do you know how adorable that is? There's no, no particular moment during this. It's just, just the whole thing. Just the whole love story that is Carl and Ellie. And that brings us to number one, Eve fixes Wally. My wife asked me to say for the record that she strongly disagreed with this and that the Carl and Ellie thing should have been first, but allow me to explain. I agree, we were really splitting hairs between the top two, but we just really love this scene. I mean, Wally's only motivation for like most of the movie, regardless of actually trying to save the earth or whatever, is just to hold Eve's hand. That's so cute. But apparently not that cute because Eve spends most of the movie just sort of shrugging him off, despite the insane amount of effort he goes to. He takes care of her when she goes into hibernation mode. He literally holds onto the side of a rocket as it blasts through space. And oh yeah, there was that time he got crushed and saved all of human civilization. And actually that last one does do it. The Axiom blasts back to Earth. And the very first thing Eve does is race to Wally's home, repair him, at rocket speed and then, and this is the moment, the key moment, she blasts a hole in the roof so that he can start recharging with the sun. Which might not seem like a big deal, but look how far away they are from outside. What is that, like a foot and a half? You telling me Eve couldn't wait one more second for the sun to start recharging him? No. No, she couldn't. And that is why this is number one. Because Eve loves Wally so much, she can't wait even one more second for him to come back. So Ben, there you go. Those are my top 10 most romantic moments in Pixar. My question for you and everyone else is, do you agree? And if not, what is your most romantic moment from Pixar? Let us know in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing. Before I go, just wanted to mention our Patreon page. We are having our Google Hangout Live with Ben and I tomorrow night. So if you want to be a part of that, head over to the Patreon page and learn how you can be a part of it. But otherwise, thank Thank you guys for watching so much. Please leave a like on this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Pixar content from us. If you'd like to see our list of the top 10 saddest Pixar moments, you can click this list right here.